Once known as the black and white creeper due to its way of creeping around trees, the black and white warbler is fun to watch as they move about much like how nuthatches do. This, combined with their curious nature and bold coloration, makes them a favorite warbler for beginner birders since they are easy to spot and recognize. With such a beautiful zebra-like plumage, black and white warblers are exciting to catch in your field of vision. Measuring around 4 to 5 inches in length and weighing almost half an ounce, these medium-sized warblers have a short neck and tail and a long, slightly down-curved bill. In this species, it's possible to tell the difference between sexes. Males have a lot more black streaking, especially on their underparts and cheek. Females and juveniles are similar to one another, but with paler plumage and less streaking. Also, note a light brownish yellow on their flanks, as well as a white throat and grayish ear patch. These birds can easily be mistaken for black poles, yellow-throated warblers, and brown creepers. It's pretty easy to see the differences between the creeper and the yellow-throated warbler, but male black poles may pose a little more challenge. Black and white warblers don't have a solid black cap. These streaky warblers spend their winters as far south as Central and South America. In these tropical locations, they can be seen in a large range of habitats, such as gardens in other urban locations, wetlands, fruit orchards, and many types of forests. When it comes time to leave for their breeding grounds in the north, they will waste no time getting back and are one of the first warblers to arrive. During migration, they can be found in woodlots and forest and riparian areas. Very common throughout Canada and the eastern United States during the summer months, it's pretty easy to find this bird since they aren't very shy and have a curious nature. Look for them hanging out in deciduous and mixed forests, especially ones with trees of mixed ages. The black and white warbler is the only member of the genus Nile Tilta, which means moss plucking, a reference to how they probe bark and moss for insects. No matter what time of year, the main source of food for these warblers is insects. During spring, dormant ones are readily taken and over the breeding season, the bulk of their diet is larvae from moths and butterflies. Many other insects are preyed on, such as ants, leaf beetles, wood borers, leaf hoppers, and weevils. They also eat arachnids like spiders. Black and white warblers have several hunting and foraging tactics. They may be seen down low near the forest floor, or high up in the trees searching for some grub. As they hunt, they creep along the trunks and limbs of trees, switching their body from side to side at each hop. Sometimes they'll fly out after insects similar to how flycatchers do. They may even cleverly take advantage of insects lured in by the yellow-bellied sapsucker sapwells. The way in which they move around is so much like nuthatches. In fact, in this regard, they behave more like nuthatches than a warbler, and even have an enlarged tawn claw, which is what allows them to climb so well. However, unlike nuthatches, black and white warblers can't hitch down the tree head first. These charming streaky birds also move a lot like brown creepers, but for creepers, they only ever move up a trunk. During migration and at the beginning of spring, listen for their easily heard and kind of squeaky wheezy wheezy song that lasts about three seconds and is repeated over and over. This can be another great way to locate one. They can also make a longer and faster version on their breeding grounds. and males sing a softer version when near females during courtship and nest building. Another call that is used by both sexes is a sharp chit or pit call, which can have many variations. Males defend their territories aggressively, often chasing intruders while singing. Once a male is paired up with a female, his new mate will bring him to potential nest spots at the base of a tree or a fallen log. The female takes the lead in building a nest, 
that is well blended into the surrounding area. A round open cup nest, nearly 5 inches or more in diameter, and 5 inches high, is made from dry leaves, pine needles, bark strips, and grass. The cup is lined with softer materials such as moss, dried grasses, and even horsehair. 4 to 6 eggs that measure 0.6 to 0.8 inches in length and 0.5 to 0.6 inches in width are laid, and are creamy white, pale bluish, or greenish white with speckles of brown or lavender. The female incubates them for close to two weeks, and the nestling stage is another two weeks. In years when insects are plentiful, the black and white warbler can have two broods in a season. The scruffy fledglings stay with their parents for roughly a couple of weeks to a month, staying close by to them and nearly always begging to be fed. Black and white warblers are common, and their population is estimated by Partners in Flight at around 20 million. During the time frame between 1966 and 2014, it was recorded that they declined by about 33%, according to the North American Breeding Bird Survey. On the Continental Concern Score, they rate a 10 out of 20 and are not on the 2014 State of Birds watch list. These birds are very susceptible to organic pesticides that are used to deal with insects. However, the main concern for the species is the fragmentation of forests into smaller and smaller areas. This is because the black and white warbler is a forest interior species. So while fragmentation benefits some species, such as the Carolina wren, for the black and white warbler, it's a disaster. It just goes to show the delicate balance that is required in order to keep biological diversity intact. Another thing that poses a serious problem for these warblers is the fact that they migrate at night and are therefore vulnerable to collisions with tall buildings and radio towers. While some of these collisions are random, the ones that cause the most problem are lighted windows, which lure birds unfortunately to their deaths. Thankfully, there are always solutions to a problem. Since 1993, Fatal Light Awareness Program, FLAP, has helped to spearhead lights out programs across North America, calling for buildings and major cities to turn off all of their lights each night during peak migration times. This seems to have a profound effect, as one study by the Field Museum in Chicago showed that in one building, turning the lights off reduced the number of bird kills by an average of 83%. That's very promising news ensuring that these wonderful little beings can make it back to their breeding grounds safely. If given the chance, a black and white warbler can live pretty long. One female that was banded in North Carolina in the 50s was recovered in Pennsylvania more than a decade later. She was 11 years and 3 months old. If we all work together to put effective measures in place, the beautiful birds of this incredible planet can really thrive. And we owe it to them, all the beauty, wonder, and so much more that they give. Of all the warblers I've been privileged enough to observe closely and get familiar with, this wonderful character is one of my favorites. They have such a bold and curious way about them. It's nothing for one to come over and investigate a person. I've had one sun or cool off on the ground next to me as I stood watching other birds. But one thing that really sticks out in my mind is the time I saw one give some serious thought to feeding nuthatch nestlings. This was the second time that evening it stopped by the nest, too. On another separate occasion, I saw one follow Tim, a black-capped chickadee I knew, to the nest. And nosily peered into the hole. My gosh, they are such darling little warblers. I have never seen other birds doing that, and it's one thing that I truly love about these zebra pattern warblers. So keep an eye on these birds, as you never know what you will witness them doing. Have you been seeing any black and white warblers yet? What do you like about them? Comment below, and as always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Happy spring birding! And for anyone that may be interested, I recently updated my shop with some new shirts, mugs, and tote bags. Visit lesliethebirdnerd.com Thank you for your support.